In this episode, we're going to be making a small beer, which despite the name, is actually pretty nice. Come along and see how we do stuff. Small beer as an everyday beverage has pretty much disappeared from the landscape. A lot of that has to do with uh, you know industrial processes that have taken over. Um, most places now have at least, um, uh, in the modern sense, uh, pot potable water. But uh, small beer used to be, and at one time for hundreds of years, was probably the most consumed beverage on the earth. Uh, most people drank some form of small beer and it had different ingredients and different styles all over the world. But most people drank some form of lightly fermented beverage that was used to basically purify water and make it drinkable. And so uh, today, the term itself is pretty unpalatable to most people. If you like beer, the word small in the title is not something that recommends it. Most people who like beer want a uh, full strength beer, who want some body to it. And then um, if you don't like beer, the word beer in the title might throw you off. In reality, a small beer was really a uh, uh, lightly fermented beverage, uh, only maybe 1% to 3% alcohol, that um, uh, was made out of whatever was at hand at whatever season. And it could change throughout the year. And there were lots of different names for different uh, small beers in different areas. You might have heard of Groot or Swanky and other other forms. But really, it was uh, a, a lightly fermented beverage that uh, could have had herbals in it, could have had um, uh, barley, wheat, rye, uh, bran, wheat bran, just about anything that was to hand that might have a, a small amount of sugar content in it. And then uh, they usually use some form of yeast, usually that which was uh, used in, in bread making. And so um, there was kind of an in intersecting of the, the, this idea with um, quite often the brewers would, uh, after they made their full strength beers, there were still some residual sugars in the barley or the grains that they used, and then they would make a small beer after that. Now, most people... In order to partake of the uh, beverages from the brewer, uh, would have to live fairly close within walking distance. And in that case, the brewer was usually either related to or was the miller as well. And there might have been some type of barter that took place as far as you bringing in a portion of your, your wheat and then receiving some of it back regularly in beer and small beer. Um, if you live farther than walking distance from the brewer, uh, most households made their own um, small beer and uh, it was generally made by the women and so the uh, the brewery which even some small houses had a, a brewing area was uh, was quite busy because in order to make enough you can imagine if you had a family of seven to ten people and several small babies and even babies drank a small beer it was healthy for them and for everybody involved um, it was a way to get, uh, you know, wonderful probiotics and vitamins, and uh, the small amount of alcohol was also helpful. Um, and yet, um, if you had seven to ten people to make uh, small beer for, and that was really their main uh, beverage, even more than water. Water was not drunk unless somebody happened to have a clean well or a, a stream or a brook that was clean. And so you can imagine how much of this had to be made, and it was a daily usually a daily deal wasn't that big of a challenge uh, to make it but it was a constant uh, uh, task and all right so we're going to make some small beer in this episode and um, as, as I mentioned earlier uh, depending on the time of the year and where you live and what is um, currently uh, available where you are uh, pretty much any ingredients can be used so I'm not going to give you a recipe I'm just going to show you how we made uh, the batch that we made for this episode. Thank you. 
All right, so I've gathered my herbs for my uh, small beer, which again is going to be anything that uh, is kind of growing that's edible in your your area during the, the whatever that season is, and it will change with the seasons. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this on the cutting board and chop it all up into kind of bruise it, make sure that uh, the little time it's with the yeast, it's going to have some access to uh, some sugars. I'm not trying to finely dice this or or anything. I'm just going to give it a little cut. All right. I'm going to put them in my bottle. This is a one-gallon glass jar bottle wine bottle all right when i get all this in here i'm going to fill this with uh not all the way up to the top you want it to have a little bit of room uh but i'm going to fill it up with uh, not quite boiling water just short of boiling and that will get it ready to go and we'll steep it kind of like a tea all right Another available sugar, uh, most people would have had some form of fruit or berries during the spring through the fall. Uh, for us, this time of year, that means agarita berries. And you can see most of these are not really red yet. The next couple of weeks they'll be getting really red and falling off. But um, these are a little bit difficult to pick, but we're going to get a bunch of them for our small beer. Basically, it's like uh, picking Skittles out of a porcupine. <laughs> but go ahead and pick them. <laughs> it's worth the uh, hour it takes to get a half a pint. So we got back from uh, harvesting the uh, agarita berries. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bust these up in a mortar and pestle. You don't really need to juice them so much. You could put these through a juicer or if you have a uh, one of those little hand crank uh, food processors. You just really want to kind of bruise them and bust them open so the juice will leach out into the, the tea and uh, give it some good color and flavor and a little bit of sugar for the yeast to eat. So I'm just going to pour these into here and uh, go to work on them. You can use any form of a sugar that you've got uh, in hand. Honey would work great. White sugar would even work. We chose to use Sucanon. It's kind of like a, a crystalline version of uh, molasses, and it works great for this project. The next step is to try to figure out what kind of yeast you're going to use. I first decided I was going to use just a regular uh, instant uh, bread yeast from the store. 
If you're gonna do that, you're gonna use only one fifth of a packet for a one gallon batch. I later decided that I was going to go ahead and um, split this into two half gallon batches. And I used the bread yeast for one half. And for the other half, I used a leaven that we had saved uh, from some of our bread. Next step in our uh, small beer, and what I've done is I, I made a gallon of the small beer, and and then I decided to divide it into half gallon batches because I wanted to try two different ways of uh, of uh, leavening or or adding yeast to it. And so this one here, uh, this is these are both from the same gallon. This is uh, using regular bread yeast that you would buy at the store. And then this, um, I'm actually using some leaven that I had, uh, that I made, and I'll probably do a video showing that. About a week and a half or two weeks ago, some, uh, some of the bread from my uh, dough batch, I put it in um, salt. And then I use that, and you can see they both fermented pretty well. I, I really don't know what accounts for the difference in the color, other than, um, you know, one of them may have fermented out a little bit better. These are only, now this is a small beer, so uh, these have only been fermenting about 48 hours. And so we're not going to be letting them get to any type of high alcohol level. They'll be anywhere from 1% to 3% most likely. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this Krausen off of here, and it's a very circular thing because we'll use this Krause and we'll dry it and uh, it'll become the yeast for a batch of bread. And then again, we can use that bread leaven to make beer. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scrape off this Krause. And just barely kind of get just the foamy yeast. Smells great. And then I'll do this one. This was the uh, store bread yeast. And you can see that the Krausen isn't as thick and it really didn't uh, Leave as much here on the top. I'm going to put this out in the sun and let it dry, and hopefully, it'll flake up. All right, see you at the next step. All right, I'm uh, going to fill some bottles here with our uh, small beer. These will only be allowed to stay in the bottle probably at the most four or five days. And uh, hopefully they'll carbonate a little in the bottle and um, give us a nice refreshing uh, effervescent. Oh, that's not going to work. Pause. All right, I got a funnel that works. We're going to start off with the one that was with the leaven. much as possible and it's no big deal but the, the yeast slurry at the bottom if it gets in the bottles it's no problem it's very healthful it's very high in vitamin B and D and a bunch of other good vitamins but I'll probably cut this off before the bulk of it goes into the bottle so that's our ones with the leaven for yeast We'll mark these and uh, separate them from the other. We'd like to just see which ones work best, which ones taste best. All right, now we'll do the ones that we use the regular bread yeast on. So that's the ones with the uh, regular bread yeast. And now we'll uh, close these up and I'll label them. And hopefully in two or three days, we'll 
finish this up and taste it and see what we got. All right, so here we go. It's been about um, maybe four or five days, maybe five days since we uh, made our uh, small beer. And so now we're going to uh, taste test. If you'll remember, I divided the one gallon batch into two uh, types. One I did with uh, leaven, which is basically just a way of uh, storing and keeping, preserving yeast that we already had available. And then the second one I made with just store-bought bread yeast. So uh, these have been down in the root cellar for a couple of days, maybe uh, two days. And... Um, you know, this is a green beer. This is something you're going to drink fairly quickly from start to finish. Hasn't been that many days. So I think it was uh, two, to, two and a half days uh, for the initial fermentation. Then it's probably been in the root, root cellar about two days. I can't exactly remember. All right, so we're going to try the Levin uh, small beer first. Well, that didn't pop very good. Got a little bit of carbonation. Oh wow, that's really good. It's actually got pretty good carbonation. It's like a soda. And uh, sweet. Uh, tastes almost like honey. Like a herbal honey tea with carbonation. So it would be a really, really good soda. Wow, I would, I would drink that every day. Um, and since it's a small beer, the alcohol is inconsequential. Um, you could probably drink that throughout the day. Uh, no problem. And it's healthy. All right, so I'm really excited about that one. Let's try the, um, the uh, bread yeast, store-bought bread yeast uh, one. A little bit of a pop on that one. That can always have to do with how well I sealed the caps on these easy cap bottles. This one's uh, got good ferment, uh, good carbonation too. Smells good. Oh, that's really good. As I said at the very beginning, small beer has a big uh, hill to get over. Because of its name, uh, as I mentioned, people that that don't like beer don't like the fact that the word beer is in the name, even though generally most small beers aren't going to taste too much like beer. And people that like beer, the word small is going to throw them off. Uh, this actually tastes like a beer. Um, no, no hops in it, but it actually tastes like a beer. This first one was more herbal, and you got more of the taste of the sweetness of the sugar. Uh, I'm sure that my wife and uh, daughters, my family would pr prefer every day this one with the lemon. A lot of residual sweetness. Um, this one apparently uh, fermented out quite a bit more. It tastes more like a beer. And I'm sure if my hops had been ready and I had put hops in here, I could confuse anybody that this was a beer, even though the alcohol level is going to be really low. But it does have that um, beer, beer-like kind of sourness. Um, I prefer if I was going to. I, I guess it would depend on on the time. Uh, in the evening, uh, I probably would prefer this one because it would really, really make me think that I, it's it's basically a low alcohol beer. Um, and during the day, throughout the day, as a re refreshing carbonated beverage, uh, I would prefer this one. Um, the probability of duplicating one of these exactly is probably pretty slim. So they're going to be, every batch is going to be different. I've got a batch that's going right now that we made with um, some of the Barm or the uh, uh, Krausen uh, from this batch. So we'll see what that one's like. But right now I cons uh, consider this a very big success. Uh, beautiful uh, product and this is something we're going to do regularly. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Make sure that you subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions or anything like that, put them down in the comments. I'll talk to you soon.